Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another Fear Street Review. I am your host, Sheree. I'm solo today, um, but it's my month, so that's fine. It's about me anyways. I am here today to talk to you about Unhuman, which hits um, VOD this Friday, June 3rd. Uh, yeah, so there might be some spoilers. There might not be some spoilers. I don't know till I know where I went. Um, so if you want to pause and not risk it, that's fine. If you, you want to stay and risk it, that's also fine. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but let us, let us summarize on humans really quickly. It is seven misfit students uh, must band together against a growing gang of unhuman savages. The group's trust in each other is tested to the limit in a brutal, horrifying fight to survive, and they must take down the murderous zombie creatures dot, 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 before they kill each other. Um, yeah, high drama in that description. I, I wish I saw that movie. I so this movie it. it it had like a false start because you're like, oh, are we going to like do something with these sort of campy caricatures of high school students? And then we didn't. We just sort of kept them one note and it felt like we had people writing um, for people a few decades younger than them. <laughs> um, that's just how it feels. That's how it came across. And yeah, I it, it left me feeling kind of hollow compared to the characters in The Breakfast Club, which is a nod the poster makes with the whole um, they'll have this club for breakfast poster um, verbiage. We didn't get any of that. We didn't really get beneath the surface of any of these characters. Even in the reveal, we're finding out people's motivations for the what caused all of this. It was just kind of like, yeah, the whole movie. Um, it, it felt closer to the early aughts MTV sort of TV shows, the scripted ones, you know, the ones we watched because we were there and around that age, but we don't know why and we won't revisit. It felt like that. So it, I, I see this as one of those, once I you see it, you see it. If you don't see it, you don't see it. I, yeah. Um, I think the cast is doing what they can with what they've been given. I, I love to see representation specifically. And so I was really excited for that. And I was a very easy, easy audience member, but now I would like to have that representation with a script as opposed to being like one or the other. Um, can we please, please, please start getting those two together? Would love it. I would live. I would be a five-star reviewer. <laughs> um, I, I also found myself just not caring. Um, this movie, it was hard to focus because it, it was so one note and it was so, it, it was just not a good time. And I hate to say that but I don't know how else to say it without keeping us here for five minutes to just get to the truth of it. It wasn't a good time. So I was bored and meandering and waiting for something to happen. And then the credits were there. Um, I, I wish that, I wish that we had taken the reveal and what I think this movie thought it was tackling. And we actually talked to people who are maybe age appropriate um, to help them figure out how to write for this age because right now I don't know who this movie's audience is for. Um, it, it feels very, very much like it's set for like the pre the pre teens of the early aughts, um, <laughs> who maybe don't want any depth. Like, so it's even made for caricatures of early aughts teens. It, it, it's weird. I I don't know. I'm excited for y'all to see it. If you're gonna see it, so y'all can let me know how you're describing this because I got no words. Um, again, I think the cast is lovely. I just didn't live for a whole lot of anything else about this movie. Um, I also think that it hurts because like it's, it's a Blumhouse epics sort of not made for TV, but made for TV movie. And we are in an era of this pandemic where we've seen so many movies that were made for TV that were good. So we no longer have to give sympathy to that. It's like, you can still do the things you can still do what needs to be done and have a good time. So I don't know, I don't know what messed up this Kool-Aid, but it was not drinkable. I don't know why that's the metaphor I reached for other than I'm a little bit thirsty. Mm. Um, Any who's, this was a nay for me. I, I am not the audience, whoever the audience should be, could be, will be. Um, <laughs> it was a nay. Um, I, I wish I could, I wish I could say more, but I just, 
I I was just so unimpressed that I don't have a strong argument for or against it. I'm not like really mad about it. I'm also not really satisfied and I kind of want my time back. So yeah, uh, it's an A. If you disagree, then feel free to leave a comment um, wherever you're listening to this for Mr. Trent Reese, because I said what I had to say and I'm going to bed now. Uh, special thanks to our friends at Fonz PR for making this review possible. We are a DIY podcast, so we are not on anybody's radar. Um, these reviews only happen when PR people care. So thank you for caring, friends. Uh, until next time, have a great Gemini season. Enjoy the correct season. It is the best month. Bye.